you're looking at the Logitech gaming software, um, I'm using the G700S. You can see it down here. It's downloaded the large, uh, nice high resolution image. Um, all your other devices will be down here. I only have this one hooked up right now. It's the only Logitech device I have, but I'll also show you how this works uh, with the G600 because there are a few more features on that mouse. But first, let's go through some of the different options. This is the screen you're greeted with. You can change between the onboard memory and all the profiles stored there, and also uh, your, you know, all the profiles that are stored in the software here on your machine. So you switch back and forth between those. Now down here on the bottom, I'm gonna click on that. It'll allow you to go and change every button on the mouse, except for that one, that button there just, you know, you toggles the endless scrolling. Before we get through the buttons, let's talk about the profiles. Now we can set up several different profiles here. I've already created a few, as you can see, which I've created one for door kickers, which is ridiculous, but hey, I did it for fun. I'll show you guys how to create a new profile. Just click here. Um, I'm gonna pick a game before I give it a name. So what do we got here? Far Cry 3, nah. What have we got in good old games? Uh, System Shock 2 would be good, yeah. And uh, so now every time I open up System Shock 2, it's going to load this profile, or you can load that profile for multiple different games, but there we have it. Now I'm going to show you how to uh, change your different buttons and all the different things you can do. So here we have the battery level by default. Uh, you can even change that one if you don't care to have a button, you know, assigned to showing you the battery level. Let's go ahead and just change. Well, let's change that one. Now we can um, edit it, use generic or unassign it. If you maybe just keep accidentally hitting a button, you can unassign it. When we get into the command editor, we have several different options. First thing you'll see is keystroke, and um, you can do stuff like Control T or you know, Control plus a button. It's not just uh, one key, so you can do that. Multi key macros. Now uh, with the macros, you of course you can record delays in between different key presses. So I'll go ahead and start recording and show you how this works. Oh, just recording stop. It records the delays. Stop recording. And we can go in here and edit each individual line if you mess up so you don't have to go back and retry uh, over and over again. Now, text block. This is going to be good if you're running around trying to spam some, you know, some message while you're on an MMO or something. Or perhaps you, you know, I want people to come to your website and you're playing Team Fortress 2. You can have one button press open up and say, hey, come join me on this server or this team or et cetera, et cetera. You, you get the idea. Mouse functions, as you can see, we have lots of different functions here. The one I want to highlight is DPI shift. I'll show you what this means in just a second, but remember DPI shift, that's a very special function. Media, these are all your Windows media commands and it'll work with any program uh, that is compatible with the Windows media commands. Hotkeys, lots of hotkeys, including some Windows 8 hotkeys, like open up those damn charms and whatnot. Shortcuts, now you can open up any shortcut you know, to a program on your computer, but you can also have this uh, linked to a directory. Functions, and you can see the functions there. And then different Ventrilo commands. And you can also remap these in Ventrilo, of course, but they've made it e easy here by allowing you to map things to the default Ventrilo buttons. All right, now let's go and take a look at our DPI sensitivity levels. They see DPI, I say CPI, so for the video, I'm going to say DPI. Um, you can change how many different levels you can toggle between with your DPI up and down button. Uh, let's do three here. Let's bring this one up and just move them wherever you like. Oh, that's fast. Now my mouse is flying everywhere. Okay. Let's just bring this one over just a little bit. Now, as you can see here, we have the assign shift button. This is very slow. So maybe I want a very low, you know, DPI because I'm going to snipe or something. I don't know what, what you guys would use it for. You assign the shift. Now that shift DPI button that I was showing you a minute ago, if you map that to one of these buttons, while you're holding this, it will toggle this DPI setting, whichever one you set for DPI shift. Um, and then as soon as you let go of it, it'll go back to whichever one you were using before. So it's pretty cool. Uh, below we have our polling, you know, report rate. I've got mine set on 1,000. I saw one guy online say he had trouble at 1,000. I have had zero problems at 1,000, so I'm running it at 1,000. And um, of course you can enable perf profile pointer settings. So if you want different profiles for different games, maybe some games, you know, the sensitivity is a little different or the mouse is a little different, so you can do that, which is nice. You can even separate your uh, DPI X and Y so for instance, here on the middle profile here, let's say I've got 3400 uh, for the X, but I want 4150 for the Y. If you want to do that, you can, you can get crazy. You could even enable mouse acceleration. I don't like it, but if you like it, go right ahead. Your different power modes. Essentially when your mouse goes to sleep, you know how often it goes to sleep and how much power it's gonna save. I leave mine on max gaming and I plug up my uh, cable often. Here's the general settings. You can just take a look here at what's on the screen. Uh, some of these settings are also found elsewhere in the software. 
Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, it'll allow you to download the different high resolution images, as you can see here. Um, I like that turned on, it's, it's quite nice. This will allow you to update the firmware of your mouse. This is actually allowing you to update the firmware of your physical uh, mouse and your other devices from Logitech will show up here like your keyboards and other uh, mice, etc, etc. And then you can have a default profile start when you start the program. And again, you can have it run uh, when Windows starts. So that's about all you can do with this particular mouse. If you have a keyboard, you can control all the different functions uh, of the keyboard here as well. But I do want to show you what this thing looks like with the G600 because we have several more options. So here is the G600 software, as you can see. Now um, there's our G600, nice high resolution image there. You can click on different areas of the mouse, of course, to open up and control this. Yeah, got all your buttons there. One thing that's interesting with this mouse is we have something called G-Shift. Uh, now G-Shift, you can assign a button. It's typically the, uh, I think it's the third uh, mouse button, your ring finger button. And when you turn G-Shift on, you can basically remap all of your buttons. So you're, while you're holding the, the G-Shift button over there, yeah, while you're holding that down, it will allow you to have almost a second bank of everything. So if, if 20 buttons is not enough, you can pretty much double it up by holding down the G shift button. And as soon as you let go of that, it goes back to your regular configs. So you can have a, a stupid amount of options with the uh, G600 mouse. This mouse has some lighting options, 16 million to be exact. The LEDs inside here will let you do all kinds of things. Um, you can uh, you know, set it up to cycle the lights, pulse the lights, or just leave it on uh, steady color. You can pick pretty much anything you like. It's really easy. I just you know, click and drag interface, and it's, it's fast, it works. I didn't see any bugs in the software, and it's just extremely easy to use. Another thing that's nice that you can do is you can enable uh, per profile backlight settings so that you know, you'll know which profile you're on based upon the color scheme that you're using. I do not have a Logitech keyboard right now, so I can't show you how that works, but possibly in the future, I'll make another video showing you guys how the, uh, the software works with one of the Logitech gaming keyboards. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please do subscribe, and also, if you want some game deals, check out a link in the description that says game deals. There's a lot of really cool game deals. Uh, most of them are cheaper than Steam. A lot of them are Steam keys, but you buy here, we get a small commission, and it helps you guys out as well because, you know, you're getting a better deal on a game. So, we're helping each other, all right? If you have any questions, inbox at techsyndicate.com. I'll see you in the near future.